L322 Range Rover is renowned for being the world's most luxurious SUV. Jeremy Clarkson still drives one, in fact, a 3.6 TD V8, just like mine, as does the Queen, literally the Queen of England. The L322 Range Rover is a full-blown off-road vehicle with luxurious on-road manners. I'm not sure there's many things I'd be content leaving my lovely house and lovely bed for, but these upright seats, the surging acceleration of the Range Rover and maybe a stiff coffee should suffice for one's big adventure. What will I be saying after 24 hours though? Can this sub 10,000 pound 4x4 endure 700 miles in one sitting? And what's more, will we be able to do it without even such as a glance at the fuel tank? Today presents a couple of enormous challenges for me then. The first one, on my wallet, as we fill up this almost 105 litre fuel tank with premium diesel. Secondly, driving 700 miles in one day is not only a test of endurance for this car, but for me. I mean, having said that, the last time I attempted a long drive in a Range Rover, it wasn't me that gave up. In fairness though, that was an L405, and this time we're doing it in the more beautiful and simpler L322, the one that us enthusiasts really love, and uh, well, I'm rooting for it. Thirdly, and the biggest challenge of all then, is we've got 705 miles to cover on one tank of fuel, because today we're driving to Scotland and back. More on the route later, but in order to get that 705 miles of range, from this one tank of fuel, we're going to have to average a total of 30.7 miles per gallon. I mean, a, a challenge that God himself would squirm out, so better make sure it's full then. Okay, tank brimmed. We put in 80 litres at a cost of 150 pounds, 150. Craziness, but that's what it is, and uh, it's literally full. The car is currently saying 508 miles of range. Now that's about 200 short of where we need to be, but that's based on my average consumption of 24 miles per gallon, which is the sort of average that I get, you know, real life in this car. So what we're gonna do now is reset these both and just hope that that range keeps going up. We should hopefully arrive in our destination in Scotland with around 350 minimum miles estimated on the range. This is it. Let's go. And this was always going to be a poor start because we are starting in the centre of Aylesbury, but so far we're averaging 5.1 mpg, which is you know, not gonna get as much further than Oxford, <laughs> oh, gosh. So hopefully, after about 50 miles or about an hour of driving, we should get onto some open roads where we can really increase that uh, consumption average. And if you are new to the channel, please do go ahead and hit subscribe for more content like this. 70% of you watching right now are not subscribed. It's completely free to do, and all you have to do is click one button, and it massively, massively helps me. But the point being, if you're new here and you aren't subscribed, you may not have seen my previous video I did about a year ago, actually, where I drove my then V12 BMW 7 Series from Ben Nevis in Scotland to the Shard on one tank of fuel. Now, that was an epic success, and I'm just going to channel the energy that I had making that video into today's challenge, because let me tell you, this is going to be a lot more difficult. It's almost twice the distance and, you know, I've got to drive the car. There's one man and there's one car and there's one channel that can prove something like this to you guys than it is this channel that you're watching right now. So let's get this 17.1 miles per gallon average twice as high as that and it's going to be plain sailing all the way up to Scotland and then back because of course we've got to come all the way back. The next fuel pump we see will be the very one that we just departed from in maybe about 16 to 24 hours time. Before going on long journeys like this, I always take precautions. I have a tire inflator, a full-size spare, and a trolley jack 
in the car, for example. I've also made sure that I've got comprehensive breakdown cover. I mean, this is a Range Rover after all. But genuinely, one thing I would never leave on a journey like this without is my Carly. The Carly scanner plugs into your OBD port on the car and then pairs with an app that can diagnose and reset faults or warnings with the car. You can also use Carly to monitor live parameters, simple things like engine RPM or speed, but more complex things like air pressure and engine load. Along with this, Carly can conduct used car checks, which can scan for things like mile manipulation, which, well, is particularly useful when buying a car and can save you a lot of hassle and money down the line. What's more is that on selected models, you can use Carly to sort of code and unlock hidden features on your car. For example, on my former BMW Z4, some of you might remember, I used Carly to code the car to have the ability to open and close the convertible roof from the key fob. It's a fantastic product. It's super easy to use actually in packs, just full of features. And of course, on this trip, should anything unexpected or a fault arise with the car, which 700 miles in a Range Rover might happen. It at least gives me peace of mind that I'll be able to find out what's going on. Check out their website to find out what Carly can do for your car and use the link and code on screen to get yourself a lovely little discount. Big thank you to Carly for sponsoring this video. Now that's over, back to the challenge. So then, according to my stopwatch, we're just turning over one hour exactly now since we filled the car up and left the BP garage in Aylesbury. And I actually can't quite believe this. We are currently on an average of 35.9 miles per gallon and counting. Now, I'll be totally honest, I've been cheating a little bit for the past 20 miles or so. We've been on the M40. Um, as I found this really extra tall DPD lorry and I've just been sort of coasting behind it at around 55 to 60 miles an hour somewhere in that range but 36.1 we're going downhill right now so it's actually increasing I genuinely never thought I'd see those numbers from a Range Rover certainly not an L322 that's remarkable and importantly it's reading a tank range of 621 miles. Now I've got 308 miles to run and then on the way back it's about 350. So at the moment we're at 30 under in terms of the tank range prediction for what we need but I would also like to have a little bit of leeway too because running out of diesel is not on the agenda for today. I thought this would be an appropriate time to quickly just butt in and remind you that you can actually win this very Range Rover for £5. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to where you can go and buy tickets and all the details can be found on the website. Nonetheless, as this was such a large undertaking, I thought it would be a good idea to get some words of encouragement from some of my fellow friends and YouTube creators. Who buys a Range Rover to do a fuel economy challenge? Who do you think you are, some kind of rip-off Jeremy Clarkson? And anyway, you bought the wrong car if you wanted to do fuel economy anyway. You should have bought the 4.4, not the 3.6. If it doesn't break down, you're definitely going to run out of fuel. Anyway, good luck. So Gareth, Joel reckons he's going to do 700 miles on one tank in his Range Rover. Yes or no? 700 miles in an old Range Rover. <laughs> oh, they laugh. No oh, way. No, no way, way, Joel. As a hypermining expert, you don't stand a chance. Idiot. Joel, when I first heard you were doing this challenge, I thought, well, yeah, that's really admirable. Good luck to you. If you keep your fingers and toes crossed, you should just about do it. But that's when I thought you were doing 70 miles in a Range Rover, not 700. <laughs> wow, thanks for that, guys. Truth is, I don't need your support because it's actually going really, really well. So we're now on the M6 toll, which means we're going to have to stop momentarily and then re-accelerate, which is really, really bad. But I'm not too worried because we've just crossed over the 100 mile mark and we are currently on an average of 37.5 miles per gallon. 
funnily enough as well, I don't think the guys at Land Rover programmed the tank range to be able to display anything more than 621 miles because it's been stuck on that for basically the last hour or so. And I must say as well, I've not been sitting here sweating. I've had the air conditioning on the entire time. I'm not using my cooled or heated seats, um, but to be honest, don't really need it anyway. But I'm trying to treat this as, you know, I could have taken the spare wheel out of the back. I could have taken the parcel shelf out, but I want to treat this as, you know, real world. Is this really possible? And I think at the moment it looks like it totally is. Now, the only other thing, of course, is we have been running two hours and I'll have the bladder of a four-year-old. And so I really, really need to pull over for a wee. So I think I'll do that and then also take the chance to get a coffee and maybe supply uh, myself up with some other snacks and stuff. Because basically we don't want to stop much because every time you stop, you have to switch the engine back on, accelerate and all the rest of it. So I think I'll look for the next services, pull over and hopefully it won't hit us too hard. Well, hello everyone. We are now 107 miles away from our destination in Scotland. We have just passed Shap Summit, which is 1,036 feet. This has been really plain sailing so far. The car has been fantastic. It has been far more economical, or at least easier to drive economically than I had initially anticipated. However, now we have sort of passed Preston and we're driving through the lakes area. There's lots of up and downs, but mainly ups it feels like at the moment, which is eating into our efficiency a little bit. We were quite comfortably for a long time sitting on around 37.5 miles per gallon, which is nuts. And it's now come down to around 36.9. And importantly, our range has begun to now come down from 621 miles where it was stuck infinitely, it seemed. And it's now on 505 miles, which is all well and good. We've got 106 miles remaining of our outbound journey. And then inbound, we're going to be doing another 350 miles. So on that maths, about a total of 456 remaining to go. 503 now on the tank range indicator. So our reserve, according to that estimate, is around just under 50 miles in terms of how refined these cars are as well, I think it's utterly remarkable considering this one is a 2008 car, it's 14 years old. You know, they're worth less than £10,000 some of these now on the higher mileage end of things and double glazed windows, gorgeous seats and it's just, you know, resplendent. So that's 250 miles down, 450 to go. So we're now off the motorway for the last hour or so of this journey. We're well into Scotland now, just gone through the town of Mofat. And our fuel consumption average is still a whopping 37.2 miles per gallon. Now this is gonna be a little bit more challenging because we're on A roads for the last hour here. And this is supposedly the scenic route to Edinburgh and scenic in Scotland means mountainous and so it's going to be actually probably the most challenging part of the drive yet never break and always use the absolute minimum of throttle input that you possibly can but i mean look at that out there guys that is absolutely i mean it is gorgeous isn't it this is for me and i'm sure for a lot of you guys what motoring is all about we're always chasing that perfect motoring moment and this right now is is right up there for me so i'm out the car but we're not actually here i just had to pull over because i'm just completely mesmerized by how gorgeous it is here 
the scenery, yes, but just the weather and the empty roads, it's half past five. And so if this is rush hour in Scotland, I genuinely want to move here. It's getting a little bit emotional as well, actually, because I just feel so, I guess I feel so lucky to be doing this for a job. I mean, maybe I won't be saying that in six hours when I'm on the M6 wanting to get into bed, but I am very, very lucky. And I just feel urged to really say that, you know what? We have it really, really easy in this country, most of us, and I'm very guilty of it. But, you know, I'm always complaining and, and moaning about trivial things when the rest of the world and lots of places, you know, they're really going through some stuff. And I just think the fact that I can get in a car, drive to this gorgeous place by myself, no one questions what I'm doing, it's totally safe. I won't go into it, but I just feel very, very lucky. And I think we should all, you know, just take pleasure in how gorgeous our amazing country is. Well, this is it. And it's not just some weird white castle hotel we're going to see. It's something a little more interesting. Let's go and have a look. This is very, very interesting. Not quite what I was expecting. <laughs> Welcome then to the great Polish map of Scotland. This is our destination. This is what I've come up to Scotland and back in a day to see. My reasoning behind coming here is if you're only gonna spend 10 minutes in Scotland after 15 or 16 hours of driving, then well, you wanna try and make the most of it. You wanna try and see as much of Scotland as you possibly can. And so by doing this and visiting here, I can see the whole of Scotland in literally five seconds, which is exactly what this is. It's a map of Scotland. So it's hard to give you perspective, but it's a 50 by 40 meter map. It was constructed in uh, well, the late seventies. And well, we're right at the top of Scotland here. So this is actually, ooh, well, Inverness would be in that little estuary there. Then up at the top here is Wick and John O'Groats. And then over there is the Outer Hebrides. And we're actually physically in real life right down there towards Edinburgh. It's really impressive. The way they've got the topography quite accurate to real life as well. But that's enough of that. That's our sightseeing done for the day because the sun is going down as you can see. And we've got a long 350 miles ahead of us back in the Range Rover. There's everything to play for yet. Yeah, something could go wrong with the car. Something could go wrong with me, although it's impossible for many other things to go wrong with me. And um, well, I really don't know what the drive's gonna have in store for us. It's obviously gonna get dark as we go along and who knows what time and which bed we'll end up in tonight. Hopefully my bed with my lovely fiance and hopefully before the sun rises tomorrow. But that's the joy of these adventures. I genuinely, I don't know. Anything could happen. So let's get in the Range Rover now, have a little bit debrief about the drive up and work out a plan for the drive back down. I suppose any normal person would probably get a hotel room now in this nice looking place. Get a nice, oh, get a nice meal. But I'm not a normal person. And Jeremy Clarkson, the massive wimp, he did stay in a hotel when he did Edinburgh back all those years ago in the Audi A8. We don't do that on this channel. Now, we are here. And um, the good news is that we've arrived with just over half a tank of fuel indicated as being remaining in the tank. 395 miles of range remaining. And we've got about 360 to go back, maybe a little more. I'll need to check the route actually in a second. So that only gives us around 30 miles of surplus. Now, based on the 37 miles per gallon and the 23 gallons of fuel that we do have in this tank, that would imply that we've got far more range than that. So I'm not sure exactly what to trust. And so I don't feel like we're completely, you know, through it. I feel like there's still gonna be some stress associated with, with making this. So when planning this trip, I wanted to get the most accurate data possible. And um, I went to the Range Rover owner's handbook because 
well, this is the most reliable source of information because it came with the car from factory. And this states that this diesel engine should be capable of 30, 30.1 miles per gallon extra urban, which is the sort of more optimistic estimate, let's say. But then I was reading a little bit further because obviously we've averaged 37, which is far, far higher than that. And honestly, far more than I expected would be possible. But I didn't realize before that the extra urban cycle and the way they get that estimate is actually just from a seven kilometer or 4.3 mile drive where the car's already warm. They do some steady speed driving and then some accelerations, decelerations and engine idling. And the maximum speed they go up to is 75 and the average is 39. So it's not actually very representative of a really long cruise. So we've obviously done a really good job today at maximizing that long average um, by cruising as much as possible. But the challenge is, is really in sustaining that for this amount of time, 700 miles and uh, many, many hours. So that was really handy to still have this with the car. And there's tons of other stuff in here too. One of which actually that it, it said tips for economic driving, obviously all the normal stuff like not braking and definitely not accelerating when you really don't need to. But one of the things that it said is when you're stopped at traffic lights for a prolonged period of time, call it more than 10 seconds, put the car into neutral because that uses ever so slightly uh, less fuel as well. So top tip from Land Rover themselves that I've used uh, for this trip and I didn't know about before. Anyway, it's now half past seven in the evening and we've probably got about seven hours to run, meaning the absolute best we're looking at an ETA of around half two, is that right? It's gonna be late. I've just plugged the route back in then to Google Maps and it's saying 350 miles exactly, six hours and 16 minutes, which is assuming no stops and driving at the speed limit, which obviously we won't be doing because we're going to be trying to preserve fuel. So here we go, here's a bit of a better overview of how far we've got to go. We're up there near Edinburgh, sort of between Edinburgh and Glasgow. And we've got to come all the way down past Manchester, Birmingham, and almost to London to where Buckinghamshire and that BP garage we started at this very morning is. Here goes nothing. Straight into drive. Parking brake released. And we're set. And this is it. Gosh. 350 miles all the way back to where I literally was earlier on today. I could have just stayed there. There wouldn't have been any fun or jeopardy in that, would there? I could have just hired a Ford Mondeo state for the day and driven a thousand miles on one tank maybe but everyone knows a Mondeo's cheap to run and reliable it might be a bad example of that actually but where's the fun in that everyone thinks a Range Rover is ruinously expensive to drive but if I can just prove at least that you can at least be a little bit frugal on the fuel then that's doing a good service for these cars so that's my mission objective and I'm feeling confident that I'm gonna succeed. Well, everyone, position report for you. As you can see, it is now pitch black. It took a long time for the sun to really go down, actually, I guess it helped being down far north. But we are now blasting down the M6 and the weather, I mean, what a difference a day makes. It was gorgeous and sunny and warm earlier and now it's just torrential rain. I've actually been trying not to act the rain. There's been a couple of sketchy moments because it's lots of heavy goods vehicles and water just all over the carriageway and really having to stay quite focused, which is making me a little bit tired. However, we're, we're making good progress. We've got 216.16 miles to run, and we've got an estimated range of 252 miles. 
so we're still within that sort of margin of 35 to 40 miles of additional surplus fuel but I think what I'm probably going to do next is pull over and have myself a little bit of a rest grab uh, a hot drink probably and some snacks and we've got about four hours or so then to get to the petrol station back in Aylesbury which I think I think this could be possible which is crazy So, I'm in at the services, I've uh, had a little bit of a refreshment and uh, I've just moved the seats forward, I've got my lights set up in here and, uh, well, I'm going to try and relax, but what I'm actually going to do is, well, take my shoes off, just get a bit more comfortable and um, bring the seats down and then what I'm hoping I might be able to do is fully lie down in the boot and as you can see I bought myself some duvet and some pillows so I've left the parcel shelf in and that means I can leave things like my phone there my wallet there all the important things maybe the car keys as well although probably not a good idea to leave them in view and um, there is a fairly good amount of room there and I'm just gonna probably switch that one off and just get cozy who needs a hotel room when you have a Range Rover okay all systems go 177 miles to run and 210 miles remaining on my range. I'm actually gonna go ahead and switch the screen off for night driving. I also turn the displays, as you can see, the green right down as well, just to uh, reduce distractions, turn the phone down, and that's us ready to go. So three, two, one, start. And we're away for the final time of this epic, epic journey. This is going to be such a surreal one to look back on. It really, really is. I mean, come on. Never thought I'd ever be driving all the way to Scotland and back in one day, let alone slowly because I'm trying to do it on one tank of fuel. It's half 12 and I am pulling over again because I'm really, really sleepy. We've only got two hours to go, but uh, well, I don't care. I need to, uh, I need to have a little sleep. Good morning again. Um, it's 3.08 a.m. And uh, I pulled over again at around, I think it was about half 12 because I was just really, really sleepy. No more delaying it. The final stint back to BP. Hopefully, hopefully we can make it. Well, it's 3.36, we've got just over two hours and 125 miles to drive now and about an eighth of a tank of diesel. So our work is gonna be cut out. But hopefully now 
I'm gonna have the energy to get us home and the car's just gotta do its little bit as well. motorway we're coming off here at the Blenheim Palace junction on the M40 and we now have 19 miles to go to the BP in Aylesbury where we started yesterday morning it's now 5 30 in the morning on the following day honestly it feels like I'm jet lagged it's quite uh, quite a weird feeling but the tank needle is on zero. If I remember correctly, this road is fairly flowy. There's not much stop starting, and we should be able to maintain sort of a good speed, sort of 50 miles per hour or so the whole way, which is very optimal for this car. As you can see over there, the sun is rising through the early morning mist, and it is just honestly another. Well, that although I'm tired and ready for bed, it's another sort of pinch yourself moment for me, this is just gorgeous. I've been thinking a lot on the drive this morning um, about the new Range Rover, about the L460 Range Rover. What would be amazing is if Land Rover started responding to my emails and I could get the L460 alongside this and even get an L405 involved as well. If you would like to see me get an L460 on the channel, um, perhaps if you're not already subscribed right now um, as I just make these last few miles on this journey and um, well maybe when we've got slightly bigger numbers Land Rover will read my emails. Hi Land Rover. But the overriding point being, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, this car is magnificent, isn't it? It's absolutely fabulous. And I think it's completely remarkable what we've done today slash yesterday. I mean, 33.5 miles per gallon over currently 680 miles in an almost three ton 
V8 powered SUV from 2008. I mean, isn't that fantastic? I mean, it's an utter shame that cars like this are being outlawed or engines like this are being outlawed. Although, as I've said and I stand by, I'm not a diesel fan. What a magnificent engine. And I love, can I do it? Just when you just bring the throttle down about 10%. It's all you need for those turbos to kick in and you just feel the very subtle surge of power. It's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. And I'm gonna be really, really happy when we arrive at this petrol station, which is 13 miles away, 12 miles, 12 miles away. I'm doing all this talking because I'm nervous now about conking out of fuel at any moment, but I'm gonna focus and probably turn the camera around so you guys can enjoy this unbelievable sunrise. We are less than a mile away with a tank that is well and truly empty. Average 33.4 miles per gallon. And I think, if I remember correctly, the BP, yeah, we're, it's on this road, just a lot further down, about 0.7 miles. The garage is up there, I can see it. Let's do one celebratory laugh of the roundabout. <laughs> this is such a bad idea. Oh my goodness. What if we ran out now, after all of that? Celebratory lap completed. Woohoo! Home stretch. I can see the garage. And no sputters from the car whatsoever. It's still got the power. And we are going to drive into this garage. Scotland and back on our own steam. This is... This is... This is incredible. Ah, oh, this is so... Oh my goodness, this is actually the same. I genuinely, when I was planning this, I... Oh, I really, I underestimated this car. last time on this trip then into park I'm gonna lower the air suspension actually and we are going to put on the parking brake and we're here look at that tank that is unbelievable and we've arrived just before six in the morning so that has been a crazy trip that we left here I think we were at the petrol station at around 10.30 yesterday morning. So it's been almost, oh gosh, I, the maths fails me at this time. Uh, we're talking about 20 hours on the road essentially um, and 700 miles. And I can't believe we've done it. And I'm still, I'm taking the mickey now because I'm still running the engine. This is remarkable. Right, let's fill her up and see um, see what's left in the tank shall we this is going to be really interesting top tip as well if i haven't shown you before if you've got a car with a big tank like this it actually takes a long time to fill up obviously and you have to squeeze the handle but i don't like squeezing the handle so i grab the filler cap and just shove it in there and it will continue to uh, to fill and you can do it with no hands now I put in the premium diesel for the challenge, which was 195 a litre, I think. But this normal diesel is still 182 a litre. So it's 65 litres and 120 quid currently. Which is just... But, look where that diesel can get you. It can get you to Scotland and back. Oh, I can hear the tank fit. Oh, it's just clicked at 90. You are joking. That is 
brimmed full. Ninety three point eight three litres, which means there is still eleven litres in the tank. Wow. Well, there we go. That's seven hundred miles and four hundred pounds later. We've we've done it, and I cannot believe ninety three point eight three liters is what just went in. So the tank's one hundred and four point five. So just over ten liters still remaining in the tank when we arrived, with no range needle on zero, and our average being thirty three point five. Ten liters is two point two gallons. So basically another seventy miles. We had another seventy miles physically in the tank even when we we're on zero i love doing this sort of stuff and thank you guys so much for allowing me to do it for my job it's incredible and there's more stuff like this uh, a lot more actually coming soon so do subscribe if you're not already i really really encourage you to do so it's really easy and it's probably the the best thing you can do to help the channel so please do subscribe if you're not already thank you guys so much for watching thanks again to carly for sponsoring this video and i will see you all very very soon